Nothing arises from nothing, which is the extraction. Putting this into a cosmic framework raises an intriguing question. How did the universe physically come into existence? For our earthly existence, anything can only be created if the necessary building blocks are present. However, where did the raw materials originate from that enabled the universe to form? We'd want to continue talking about this important subject with you today. What are the professionals' opinions on this crucial question? And can it even be resolved with what we now know? If you're enthusiastic about groundbreaking research and the universe's greatest mysteries, don't forget to subscribe. Please give us a thumbs up so we know you're interested in the information in our films. The beginning is like the end. Even while the theories differ, whether it's the Big Bang, the Great Crunch, or the Big Freeze, they all get to the same conclusion. The universe's last moment. If you test these theories, the final star in the universe will eventually burn out. After that, the universe will collapse into a dark, empty space, where enormous black holes will eat up all of the remaining matter before vaporizing in a last act of annihilation. The universe activity will eventually come to a full stop when space expands to the point that even the little light from the gravitational monsters becomes too dispersed to interact with. Although many scientists believe that this process would ultimately bring an end to our galaxy's home. Some scientists, however, believe it to be something entirely different, perhaps the start of a new universe. In fact, some scientists are certain that the Big Bang began in such a cold, dark, and empty world. But before we explore this intriguing argument, we need first think about another equally intriguing query. Actually, the first tangible substance appeared. It is obvious that nothing like to this existed at the time of the Big Bang or in the eons that followed if we wish to explain the development of stable matter from atoms or molecules. What is certain is that the first atoms began to form from smaller particles as soon as the environment cooled down enough. We also understand how these atoms subsequently bonded to become stars, which then defeated heavier elements, but the extent of our understanding leaves us puzzled as to how anything can merge from nothing. So let's go even further back on the cosmic time wheel. The nucleus of an atom is made up of protons and neutrons, which are assumed to be the earliest long-lived particles of matter in the history of the galaxy. Even though it is widely accepted that they were generated shortly after the Big Bang, matter in the traditional sense had existed before then. Fortunately, physics enables us to go a bit further back in time to the processes that took place prior to the formation of stable matter. The Planck era, this period in physics, is known as the Grand Unified Theory. The specifics of this hypothesis are based on the observation that three of the four known basic physical forces, the electromagnetic interactions, the weak interaction, and the strong interaction, existed as a single unified force at the moment of the Big Bang. If we delve even farther into the area of theoretical physics, we discover that the physical universe was made out of an odd jumble of transient elementary particles. Quarks, the constituent parts of protons and electrons, were among them. Antimatter and matter had a balanced connection. There was a nearly mirror image antimatter counterpart for each sort of matter particle. These two particles, which only had one thing in common, destroyed one another if they ever came into contact. But how did these atoms come into existence? In this sense, the vacuum, which is typically thought of as a great example of empty space, is really teeming with physical activity, according to quantum field theory. The result of this is energy fluctuations, which can lead to particle appearance and disappearance cycles. As a result, analogous processes also define the vacuum of space-time. Particles appear to be emerging from the emptiness in this situation as well. If we pursue our main query further, we encounter still another barrier. So how did space-time begin to exist? The epoch plane effectively shows us that our physical theories finally encounter insurmountable obstacles in this regard. The epoch plane, which is theoretically brief, specifically covers the time right after the Great Bang. Space-time itself started to participate in quantum fluctuations at this moment. The issue is that we require a complete theory of quantum gravity that combines quantum physics with relativity in order to fully comprehend the epoch plane. In this sense, promising options include M-theory and loop quantum gravity. Here, it is assumed that regular space-time is emergent. Therefore, what we think of as space-time is actually the outcome of microscopic quantum processes that are invisible to us. Our traditional knowledge of cause and effect is nearing its limitations much as our traditional understanding of space and time is no longer accurate in the Planck epoch. Nevertheless, even though our concept of causality does not apply to the Planck epoch, it is theoretically possible to understand one aspect of that epoch with the aid of another. All the theories devoted to this section describe something physical that was happening at that time, a sort of quantum precursor to space and time. 
Our existing ideas, however, are unable to handle this difficult task. Therefore, we are unable to make any generally reliable assertions regarding the primary processes of cosmic formation until the pertinent doctrines are completely established. At this time, it must be noted that no proven instance of a creator, multiverse, or cycle emerging from nothing is known to physicists. All hypotheses on this issue remain extremely hypothetical since it is currently impossible for us to comprehend the quantum state of the cosmos at the beginning of the Planck Epoch. Some people try to use the influence of a divine creator to answer this key puzzle. The presence of a multiverse is seen to be the most promising theory by other, less religious reasons. It suggested that the cosmos was simply a little link in an endless web of other universes rather than an all-encompassing structure. According to related theses, the cosmos goes through a continuous cycle of annihilation and rebirth. An intriguing strategy with substantial support from physicist and Nobel Prize winner Roger Penrose. Once, the British scientists introduced the cum formal cyclic cosmology hypothesis. The Great Bang and the far end of the cosmos have startling mathematical similarities if we accept the experts' theory. When stretched to their absolute limits, the two states are actually identical. This situation inspired Penrose to formulate a theory that would later turn out to be very paradoxical. All the matter in the cosmos was created by the complete lack of matter. According to this theory, the Big Bang emanates from a source that is most similar to the terrifying emptiness. Specifically from the remnants of the universe's stuff being destroyed by black holes and then decomposing into photons. But how is it conceivable that a hot, dense world logically correlates to a cold, empty cosmos? Conformal scaling is a challenging mathematical technique that holds the key to the solution. It is a geometric transformation that modifies an object's size while maintaining its shape. In fact, by scaling the universe into its current condition, the shapes of their respective areas may match. In other words, the cold, empty state is what causes the hot, dense state to occur. Thus, a fresh Big Bang occurs after the universe has finished expanding. The look for emptiness. Imagine if Penrose's contentious idea is one day shown to be true. Even then, the issue of how anything may appear out of nothingness would remain unanswered. Where did the physical world originate? How did the universe's cyclical system come to be? Why does anything even exist as opposed to nothing? Even if nothingness existed, could it even exist? This refers to everything being absent. As you can see, philosophical issues quickly surface in relation to this intriguing subject. However, we want to stick with physics for the sake of our film today. What can science tell us about the potential prehistory of cycles then? According to one theory, there is absolutely no physical explanation for it. Alternately, we're talking about an endless chain of cycles that keep repeating, where each universe's starting quantum state influences the characteristics of the one after it. Furthermore, it is conceivable that there is only one cycle and that a cosmic cycle's commencement is decided by the characteristic of its termination. Who knows if we'll ever find a solution to the universe's most fundamental issues but it's not simply this immense degree of ambiguity that makes the topic so intriguing. We now want to know what you think about the various theories about the universe's genesis and future. Comment here with your views, ideas, and criticisms on today's article. Want to see more compelling cosmology videos? Take a peek at some of the other content on our channel by clicking on one of the credits. I appreciate you coming. Have a good day and see you later.